It's a big county and we can't all drive it ourselves. That's why one department is here to handle our community's transportation needs. Today we're on location to talk with New Pats Director Cam Coburn about what's steering their success. We also look at changes coming to your own commute along with the latest in county news on this episode of PCR. Hello and welcome to PCR. I'm your host, Kiara Jones, Director of Public Information and Media Relations for Pitt County. Here as always to keep you informed about the functions and services of your county government. Well, one of these services is on display right beside me. If you've ever seen one of these buses on the road, then you've witnessed firsthand one of the many ways Pitt County government serves its citizens. I'm talking, of course, about the Pitt Area Transit System. And with their fleets logging over a half a million miles per year, Pats is certainly one of our busiest departments. Later on, we'll actually sit down on one of these with the new PACS director, Cam Coburn, and talk about how they benefit everyone in Pitt County, regardless of whether you ride or not. But first, there's plenty going on right now, so we're sending it over to PCR Information Room, where Savannah Eckert has the latest in county news. Savannah? Thanks, Kiara. Well, spring is finally here, and according to one recent report, it'd be a great time to get out and be active. In late March, the 2016 county health rankings were released by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the University of Wisconsin Population Health Institute. These rankings provide a snapshot comparing the overall health of nearly every county in the nation, and Pitt County's results were a bit of a mixed bag. According to the rankings, Pitt County moved from the 39th rank to the 59th out of 100 in health outcomes. We also moved from the 44th rank to the 57th rank in health factors. In some good news, the report noted improvements as well. Among social and economic factors, Pitt County moved from 65th rank last year to 55th. High school graduation rates, college attendance, unemployment, and childhood poverty were among these social and economic improvements. We also jumped up to be ranked 8th for clinical care and improvement by ranking 12th in 2015. According to the Pitt County Health Director, Dr. John Morrow, we should use these rankings as an encouragement to improve the environments where we live and create a culture and community that promotes health. To view the entire results of the report, just go to our website and click on the story in the news section at the right hand of the page. Speaking of health, one program is working to ensure a healthy diet in our youngest population. If you have a child under the age of five or are pregnant or breastfeeding, then the WIC program may be beneficial to you. WIC is a special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children up to the age of five. The WIC program serves as a resource for clients who receive nutrition education, breastfeeding support and services, and healthy foods. It also serves as a referral resource for health care and other programs. Applicants must live in North Carolina, meet income guidelines, and have an identified nutrition or medical risk factor. For more information, call 902-2393 or visit the WIC website at nutritionnc.com. Be on the lookout next time you visit your mailbox as it may contain some important information about your taxes. In February, notices were sent out regarding the 2016 reevaluation. As a reminder, reevaluation is the process of reappraisal that updates the assessed value of all properties to keep those values consistent with what the properties are worth in the current market. The information recently mailed is the notice containing new tax values for real and personal property. Tax bills with the new assessed values will be mailed in July of this year and become due on September 1st. Payment of these bills will become past due on January 6, 2017. For more information concerning your new values or the reevaluation process in general, contact Tax Administration at 902-3390 or visit their page on our website. And now it's time for your Board of Commissioners update. At their March 21st meeting, the Board heard a presentation from Pitt County Vector Control Manager Jim Gardner. Vector control refers to the use of various methods in dealing with mammals, birds, insects, and other arthropods which transmit disease. Gardner spoke on the county's efforts in preparation for the season's mosquito management. With both a wet winter and spring so far, the threat of a heavy mosquito population this year is a possibility Jim and the Environmental Health Department are keeping a close watch on. 
Mr. Gardner also gave tips on what the general public can do to help reduce the risk of nuisance or possible health concerns. You can view his presentation or any other meeting online by visiting us at youtube.com slash Pitt County Government. And finally, in your employee spotlight, we are hitting it close to home as we highlight our very own special guest. Cam Coburn started his career with Pitt County over 20 years ago and has since served in several capacities, most notably as a school resource officer with the Pitt County Sheriff's Office. Cam is a resident of Farmville and recently earned his master's degree in Justice Administration. He also has experience with transportation coordination through previous positions held in Pitt County. Earlier this year, he was named director of the Pitt Area Transit System, taking over after the retirement of longtime director Rebecca Clayton. So in recognition of your hard work in one county department and support of your leadership in another, we shine this month's employee spotlight on you, Cam Coburn. That wraps up this edition of the news. Back to you, Kiara. Thanks, Savannah. Stick around because when we come back, we hop on the bus with past director Cam Coburn. The Pitt Area Transit System's mission is to provide safe, reliable, cost-effective transportation to the citizens of Pitt County. PATS is open to all county citizens who live outside the city limits of Greenville, North Carolina. PATS provides curb-to-curb -curb service and operates Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. till 7 p.m. and Saturday 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. Transportation scheduling requests are taken from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. Welcome back. The mission of the Pitt Area Transit System is to provide safe, reliable, and cost-effective transportation that enables individuals to access necessary medical care and other essential resources. This helps improve and enhance quality of life for our community overall. In 2015, longtime director Rebecca Clayton retired, but the will was soon taken over by former Pitt County Deputy Cam Coburn. And we're so excited to be joining him on one of their transit vehicles today. Well, thanks so much for being with us, Cam. Thank you for having us. Okay, so a lot of people may know you in a different role. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you transitioned from the Sheriff's Office to Pitt Area Transit. Well, um, in my journey, I've had experiences working at the, both the detention center and um, on the Sheriff's side. And uh, one of, some of those experiences have been to help coordinate and, and manage uh, the transportation division over at the detention center. So that experience was very valuable. Also, um, through the experiences of supervising personnel here on the sheriff's side and, and with the patrol division too and the knowledge of the roads, um, all of those things um, combined helped me to uh, make the decision to uh, pursue this opportunity. So we're so glad that you are here in this new role, um, but can you talk a little bit about what PATS does? See, a lot of people may see the vans and the mini buses running and, you know, down the road. Tell us a little bit about what your department does for those who are unfamiliar. We're a coordinated transport service. Um, a lot of people think that maybe we serve only one group of people in particular, and certainly we do have groups that may be served uh, more than others. Um, some of our largest clients are the East Carolina Vocational Center, the uh, Department of Social Services, the Health Department Council on Aging, but we are also uh, open to any rider that lives in Pitt County that needs transportation services that's outside of the Greenville Great Bus Transportation System. Right, so we serve the unincorporated areas of Pitt County. That's correct, as well as some of the uh, smaller corporated, uh, incorporated towns such as Farmville, Winterville, Aiden, Grifton, Bethel, um, and so on. Okay, so if I needed a ride to Food Lion or to the pharmacy, I could uh, schedule a pass ride? Absolutely, that's what we call an RGP rider or a rural grant program rider. And uh, for a cost of $14 round trip, um, you can schedule those uh, trips in a day in advance by calling the office or uh, reserving online by 2 p.m. on the business day before. Um, and we do uh, offer those services from Monday through Saturday and certainly the appointment scheduling time Monday through Friday uh, up until 2 p.m. Okay, so um, can you talk about how PETS um, impacts the citizens here in Pitt County? Uh, it's been a very, very valuable service. Uh, we have seen um, so many people able to be helped and they may not would be able to get to the places, uh, people who may not be able to drive, uh, maybe who don't have their own transportation um, system because of maybe economics or uh, whatever the reason may be. It, it could be, um, you know, ability or the fact that the uh, DMV may not um, 
be able to grant them a driver's license. We are that service, and, and certainly we're open to, to anyone um, who wishes to ride, but those are the folks that we have been able to help, and that has been a very meaningful service. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about the difference between the great transit system and, and, and PATS? Yes, um, in fact, great uh, offers uh, a fixed routing bus system, whereas we are more of a coordinated transport, and we actually serve as the paratransit for the great bus system, meaning that uh, the clients that they are unable to provide wheelchair lifts and, and services mm -hmm. such as that, we actually subcontract for the Greenville Great System. So we, we do, in a sense, uh, uh, serve that area in that capacity as well. Okay, so I know you just started, <laughs> um, but can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges you think you may face by um, helping provide transportation on a larger scale? Um, I think some of the challenges that we uh, may or, or have run into in the past are um, sometimes the changing in funding from because we do receive federal uh, grants and uh, state grants as well uh, for some of the services that we we provide um, those can be challenging depending on what the um, economy may dictate how much funding that you receive uh, another uh, challenge that we are facing is uh, advertising and wanting to increase um, the amount of advertising that um, we are able to um, offer for businesses. Many businesses don't know that if they choose to advertise um, with us simply, and you can find that legal contract and, and the rates uh, for the advertising and the length of time on the website, that they can actually have a moving ad sign that goes over many portions of Pitt County on almost 20 different vehicles. Right. Uh, they can take advantage of that and so those are some of the challenges just to uh, build those relationships and, mm -hmm. and to get those words out with with some of the businesses and organizations okay so you can based on what you just said you can kind of see how the pit air transit system benefits the community as a whole so not only are you picking up individuals who may or may not have um, access to transportation but you're also helping benefit the businesses as well absolutely um, it, <clears throat> I think we are a great opportunity for businesses to um, have their name well, within the parameters of what the uh, contract stipulate right. but um, uh, an excellent way for businesses and, and other organizations to, to advertise and we're looking at uh, reaching out to many of those uh, stakeholders in the community and, and building those relationships and, and allowing them to, to utilize our, our services for that advertising. So is there ever a time that your fleet may not run or may not operate or someone may not be able to call you and, and schedule a ride? Well, we uh, operate um, in the mornings, um, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., uh, Monday through Saturday. And so we do not operate on Sundays and we do not operate uh, post 6 p.m. Um, so those are, are typically our, our hours, but we, we, Saturdays are very, very important because we know that um, folks that may have jobs through mo Monday through Friday may not um, have many other opportunities to uh, do the things necessary and important, pharmacies, um, possibly grocery shopping. And if they need our services, we want to be able to do that. So that's why we run that, those routes on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so in cases of emergency, is there ever a time, like if there's, you know, if Pitt County um, government is closed, then you guys are kind of shutting down your, your routes as well, right? We try to follow what the um, Emergency Operations Center here recommends and, and uh, what they, the guidelines that they follow. Um, so in the event of a, a major storm or hurricane when the winds reach a certain uh, limit, we may have to ground the vehicles for safety and, uh, and liability reasons. Um, however, uh, we are a part of the Emergency Operations Committee, so we may be called to activate and to help and have been called um, on occasions to activate in cases where there's severe tornado damage, um, maybe a flood, a hurricane, where workers may need to be moved to get into places or citizens may be able or, or have the need to be evacuated out of places. We, we do and are available to serve in that role too as uh, called upon by the Emergency Operations Command. Right. Uh, so if um, a citizen wanted to um, make a reservation that was recurring, you know, if they knew, you know, every Thursday at 10 a.m. I need to be at a dialysis center 
they're able to do that, right? And so they don't have to call every single Thursday to schedule that appointment. That, that is correct. And what they do is they call the organization that assists them um, with the appointment, if it's uh, Department of Social Services, if it's the Council on Aging, they actually make the recurring reservation based on that appointment time or the need. Now, if they don't meet any of those criteria and they are under the rural grant program, yes, they can have a uh, fixed route as long as we're aware and know that the appointment is going to be recurring and at the same place um, each, each day of the week, absolutely. Talk a little bit about your vision for the department. Some of the things that we're very proud that we've already implemented is just um, making the, the the station or the office, uh, so to speak, a little more um, public user friendly. Um, we have we're utilizing the space that we are allotted and have moved some public access um, over into hopefully where the um, the public will will be able to tell. Um, a little more where we are and also who we are by walking in and being uh, greeted frontline uh, by office staff and personnel and, and that helps to uh, help them to get in and out quicker and to take care of what they need to but also to uh, uh, maybe put a, a little more uh, positive spin on, on the user friendliness that, that we um, are doing. All right. so uh, in the future uh, citizens will be able to make reservations online, That's but uh, can you give the number again if someone wanted to reserve a ride uh, with PATS? Absolutely, it's on 902-2002, obviously area code 252, but uh, again it's 902-2002. Okay, Cam, is there anything else that you would like to, to say to the citizens about PATS? Um, we're just very excited for the opportunity to serve um, the citizens of Pitt County and all of the um, stakeholders who, who view these services as valuable. Okay, well I know that you are very busy and I wanna let you get back to your uh, work, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you again. And stick around because when we come back, we'll answer some of your emails in just a moment. It is said that a good picture is worth a thousand words, and at the Pitt County Flickr page, you can find a wealth of information from the images we upload every week. See the latest snapshots of life in Pitt County government. Log on to our Flickr page today. Welcome back. Here at PCR, it's our job to inform you of and connect you with the many services offered by your county government. Well, each month on PCR, we do our part to help make that connection by answering some of your most commonly asked questions in a regular segment we call Citizen Emails. This email is from Stephen. I was wondering what the Pitt County or Greenville, North Carolina laws and regulations are in regards to passing out flyers in public areas like downtown or uptown Greenville. It's not business related. We're just trying to campaign for a particular political candidate that will be on the North Carolina primary ballot in March. Thanks so much for any information you can provide. Well, Stephen, your email was forwarded to the city of Greenville who was able to assist you. This email is from Michael. I'm studying for the upcoming primary and cannot find online information about the candidates in the following categories, Pitt County Board of Commissioners and North Carolina District Court 3A. Well, Michael, if you need contact information for the Pitt County Board of Commissioners, you can find it on our website. If you want to find out about their candidacy or their values, etc., you need to find and view their individual websites or their social media pages. I also know that GPAT Channel 23 offers to interview the candidates, so you may want to check out their channel to find out more. And one of our latest tweets. It's back. Add the shred event to your spring cleaning schedule. Gather your old receipts, tax documents, etc. and shred them. Thanks so much for the retweets and likes. Do you have a question or comment? Then why not contact us? Just send us a tweet via at Pitt County NC or visit our website at PittCountyNC.gov and click on the contact us link at the top of the page. While you're there, you find valuable information about government services offered, meeting schedules, and there's even a link to Pitt TV. Stick around. We'll be right back. Stop and brighten your day with the most up-to-date information from Pitt County government. Delivered right to your phone or personal media device. It's all here and waiting for you on the Pitt County Twitter page.
Welcome back. If you drive your own car, bike, take a bus, or even a Pats van, there is one common denominator we all have in our daily commute, the roads. While the Department of Transportation does its best to keep up with our growing population, maintaining a stress-free roadway can be a struggle at times. Well, Pitt County Planning Director James Rose recently met up with a colleague from the NCDOT to bring us some exciting news about the future of our thoroughfares. Thank you, Kiar. I'm here today with Jeff Cabinets with the NCDOT, and we're going to talk about several projects that are located around the county. Uh, Jeff, we appreciate you being out with us today. We look forward to being on site with a couple of these projects that we'll be talking about. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your position with NCDOT? Uh, sure, James. I appreciate you letting me come out tonight or today. And uh, my title is Division Planning Engineer, and so I work uh, in our eight counties, which makes up Division Two. And I work uh, with the municipalities in the division, also with the planning organizations uh, like yourself, uh, but also uh, the regional planning organizations and the uh, MPOs of the metropolitan planning organizations that we have in the division. Well, Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about how these projects throughout the county are identified and then prioritized? And of course, it all comes down to money where the funding comes from. Well, that's correct, James. Uh, without money, you can't do anything. Um, we've got two, two different ways of uh, funding. Uh, we've got the older way, and uh, the older way, um, we identified projects um, and they got included in what we refer to as the TIP or the Transportation Improvement Program. Um, that's a 10 year document of projects that we have coming. And uh, in the, the 10th Street and Southwest Bypass kind of fall in the old way. Um, and uh, they got identified early on and the funding you know, became available. And so uh, we was able to let those to contract. And so that's why they're under contract now. We've got a new way and it goes through the, what we refer to as the spot process, which the projects actually come up from the MPOs and the RPOs to start with. Um, and get graded and scored and it's, it's basically uh, all the projects com compete against each other. Very good and for the 10th Street Connector there were a few other local partners to provide some funding, correct? Uh, sure that's correct. Um, I believe the city invited as well as the uh, federal dollars that the state had all rolled in and uh, to fund the project. Very good and certainly we've been providing a lot of local support at least for a couple of decades for the Southwest Bypass, and we're really glad to see that on the horizon now. Let's go on the road. Okay, Jeff, we're at our first stop here at the tent site of the new 10th Street Connector. Can you tell us how this is going better improve transportation citywide? Well, sure. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, James, it's going to connect the medical district to the uh, university district. It's going to be a straight shot between the two, and it'll be a um, four-lane divided section, um, and so it'll be a, a nice um, segue into the town. The project's going to be around $30 million of, in the entirety. Um, and uh, by um, November 2018, uh, we're looking at having traffic on it. Thank you. Jeff, we are the northern terminus of the Southwest Bypass, and of course this is a major project here in Pitt County. We're really fortunate to get the funding for it. Can you tell us how this is going to affect even the regional traffic here in Pitt County? Uh, sure. Uh, what this is going to do is going to be allowing to uh, uh, get on the 264 Bypass you know, up around DSM, the pharmaceutical district, um, and then transfer all the way down to Aiden, uh, actually south of Aiden and tie back in. So if you have a lot of Northwest traffic, a lot of industry or trucks, uh, they won't have to use Memorial anymore with all the stoplights and this will be a straight shot through the county from north to south. Uh, it's scheduled to be open uh, November uh, 2019. Okay, Jeff, we're here at the intersection of Hanrahan and NC11 South, and of course this has been a high volume traffic area, and we've got a lot of traffic coming in. You've seen the trucks come by from Warehouser and other uh, vehicles come through. Tell us what's going to happen here in the near future. Okay, um, what we're looking at doing here is what we call a super street design, and so what it does, it prohibits the movement across 11 uh, like it does now. Uh, we've had a, a, a long history of accidents and some of them uh, really bad accidents 
The Super Street design, basically, when you come up to it, you take a, if you wanted to take a left, you actually have to take a right first, go down the road a little ways, and make a U-turn and then come back and it goes south. And if on the other side, they would do the same thing. If they wanted to come straight across, they'd have to make a right, go down, take a loop, and then, and then come back. Um, we're looking at around $3 million for everything, right of ways and, and construction and all, and uh, could be as early as the fall of 2017. Jeff, we're here at the intersection of Cooper slash Worthington Roads along with Evans Street or Old Tar Road, known locally. Um, can you tell us a little bit of what's going to happen here? It's a heavily traveled street again, our road here, and tell us about some of the improvements right here at this intersection as well as the segment leading into Greenville. Uh, sure. This is what we refer to as the Evans Old Tar uh, project. Um, It'll run from, from this point all the way up to the other side of Greenville Boulevard. It's going to be on this side, it'll be uh, like a four lane divided um, facility. So you have two lanes going in each direction. Um, here at this intersection, we're gonna, what's proposed right now is a roundabout, um, kind of like at a Fire Tower and Porter Town Road. And uh, so that'll take the place of the four way stop right here. We're looking at a fiscal year uh, construction uh, time frame of about 2021. 20, it's a few years out, but it's not too far out. We're here at the eastern edge or eastern end of Fire Tower Road, and we've got two projects associated with improvements along Fire Tower Road. So, Jeff, can you explain both of those and maybe the sequence of order they'll come in? Uh, sure. It, it is two projects. The first one's a, a shorter project, and it'll start there. Uh, at Bells Fork, basically the intersection to 43 and Fire Tower, and it'll come up to the intersection there, 14th Street, you know, just a little bit beyond it. Um, and then uh, that's the first project. And uh, the second one will tie into that. It'll actually come here to uh, Porter Town and then turn up Porter Town and go all the way to 33. Both of them are scheduled around uh, construction of about uh, fiscal year 2019. Not sure exactly if they're gonna they go simultaneously, or but um, we've already got a, uh, uh, surveyors out here doing preliminary surveying, so uh, it's going to be um, a pretty quick project turn around. Well, Jeff, we're back at the main office. We appreciate all your time taking us around of these traffic improvements that we'll be uh, hopefully seeing over the next several years. Can you give us an idea of what we as the traveling public should do as we begin these construction projects? Well. James, probably the best thing is just kind of stay alert. Uh, we'll be putting out um, all kind of memorandums and uh, notices when there's lanes going to be closed um, and, and such like that. And just pay attention. Uh, there will be some times that we're going to be, you know, contractors will be in the road, there might be a lane shut down. Um, there'll be ample warning. You know, a little patience goes a long way. I always try to look for the future into the finished project. I know it's going to be. Uh, issues when we're building it but uh, can't get it can't get to the end product without going through it the construction phase first thank you james and jeff if you'd like to learn more about any of the projects discussed you can review them in detail on the ncdot's website stay tuned we'll be right back see the latest board of commissioners meeting today on the pitt county youtube channel This is Pitt TV. Empower you. We hope you've enjoyed this on location episode of PCR and hope we've given you some insight into how Pitt County handles the transportation needs of our citizens as well as how the NCDOT plans for the future of our roadways. We want to thank PACS Director Cam Coburn, Planning Director James Rose and Jeff Cabinets of NCDOT for their contributions to this episode. Stay tuned next month as we show you some exciting new changes in the world of recycling. Until then, don't forget to check us out on your favorite social media sites such as YouTube, Twitter, Flickr and Instagram. Instagram. Just do a search for Pitt County Government. From all of us here at the Office of Public Information and PCR, thanks so much for watching.